Hey everyone, I'm sure you've heard by now about the tragedy involving Kobe Bryant and the fatal helicopter crash. I just threw this video together uh, after realizing that a lot of people I've been talking to, like non non pilots, essentially, they have a hard time realizing just how dangerous it is when you combine all the very uh, the various aspects that were uh, going on at the time of this crash. I mean, uh, the low cloud ceiling, namely low visibility. Um, high airspeed and mountainous terrain. And so I wanted to put this together to kind of demonstrate just how dangerous this situation is. And hopefully it's edifying. So this is kind of hard to watch. It was kind of hard to make, to be honest with you, to, to see, to kind of be in the shoes of this pilot this time. Hindsight is twenty twenty, And truth be told, we don't actually know if this is what caused the wreck per se. Uh, there could be mechanical failure or something. And we won't actually know that until... Uh, an official NTSB report and investigation and all that. So take it with a grain of salt. So I'm gonna be flying the S76C, which is just another a model that's similar to the S76B that they were flying. Uh, it's, it's, it's like Las Virgenes or Las Virgenes and, and the 101 uh, westbound. The weather is approximately right. It's a 1300 foot cloud ceiling reported from Van Nuys. Uh, I put in uh, all the different factors. There's no wind, 30.16 inches of mercury, barometric pressure. It's 9.30 in the morning. Uh, visibility was 2.5 statute miles. Um, so this is kind of a, a pretty good approximation of what they might have been seeing. And then as a special kind of caveat to all this, uh, I'd like to say that this is not supposed to be a recreation. We obviously do not know what really happened. There could have been a mechanical failure. There could have been something contributing. So, you know, take it with a grain of salt until a final report comes out. Okay, so this is flying westbound along the 101, approaching, uh, approaching the interchange at Las Virgenes, the exit uh, where the pilot made his turn. As you can see, this is very low. The ceiling is at 1,300 feet. I'm at 800 feet right here. I don't uh, quite remember what his actual altitude was, but I couldn't go much higher here, of course, or I'll end up in the clouds. There's Las Virgenes exit, and this is uh, right about where he begins to make a 180, which I'll show. Again, I'm, I'm holding about 800 feet, as you can see. I'm going about 140 knots at this point, um, pulling the 180. Uh, so there's this hill that, that comes up, pops out of nowhere, uh, and I believe this is the one he hit. This one juts into the cloud layer. So you'll see now, as I begin to pull up, just past 1,000 feet, okay, into the clouds. And this really demonstrates just how dangerous this is. So really, four conditions make this incredibly dangerous uh, when combined. For one, it's low visibility. You can't see very far ahead of you. Uh, you are forced to fly low to remain out of the, the clouds because the cloud layer is so low. Uh, so you're low to the ground. And then there's rapid elevation changes. Uh, so you, you're forced to hug the ground. And then finally, you're going really fast, uh, so fast that it's difficult to make any corrections uh, before you know it, you're uh, upon a big obstacle like a giant hill in front of you. Of course, hindsight is 2020, and we don't really know if uh, something else happened that precipitated the crash, but, uh, but to me, this is a pretty plausible kind of a breakdown.